All right, welcome back to In the Mind of Music with Nate Nisa exclusively right here on IPO Radio. And we have another informative music interview for you guys. This time we've got Nightmare, drummer of Dirty Machine with us. How's it going, Nightmare? Hey, what's happening, everybody? Thanks for having me on today. Oh, thank Uh, you very much for calling. Yes, it's our pleasure. (laughs) So, Nightmare, Dirty Machine started in November of 2012 is what your social media page says, and you guys started out as an independent band. And since then, you guys have been making sound waves in L.A. and outside the L.A. scene for some time now. You guys have shared the stage with some major artists and somehow along the way recently caught the eye of Motor Graders drummer and founder Zombie Shark Records Noah Shark Robertson this year. How did you guys connect with Noah and decide to sign a record deal finally? But uh, you know, we our uh, our label brothers on uh, Zombie Shark. Uh, they're they're called the band is called Keychain. Okay. They had caught wind of us on social media, and we connected. And they liked us. We liked them, and they were like, "Hey, how about we issue guys to uh, you know the our, our label uh, and." We called Noah, and we had this great phone jam with all of us on the phone. And, then, man, it was great. We, everybody got aligned, and we all had the same vision, and it worked out great. Nice. Yeah, we, we actually know uh, Keychain as well. All those guys are awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we met them actually uh, in person this past Wednesday because they're currently doing a tour, mm-hmm. and uh, they played in L.A., and we just made it happen where we're like, well, look, how about we just play together? And it just and it was just our two bands, and there was a, a live karaoke rock band after us, and it was just a great, like, hey, homies meet homies, and it was just a great night of metal and mm-hmm. great vibe and music. Very, oh, very yeah, cool. Man. So, you guys hear yeah, that? So yeah. if you guys go to our July 22nd show, you might get that awesome experience as well because those two bands are going to be performing together on our stage. That's right. Yes, that is right. That's right. So since That's two- right. So pumped for that. Yes, very excited. So since 2012, you guys have been making new metal music. Now, new metal music has been influenced by popular bands such as Corn, Slipknot, Linkin Park, Nonpoint, just to name a few. Now, thinking about Dirty Machines music, what makes your band stand apart and unique while still playing, paying homage to the bands that influenced your sound? And what is the main theme or message in your lyrical content? Well, I, I think the key thing for people to take away when they hear new metal is not so much a style of music, rather a an attitude or a, a way of life. Just like how punk rock has its own culture and, you know, fantasy uh, rock and grunge has their own culture. Well, new metal is more of an attitude. Like, we do what we do it the way we want to do it, and you're going to love just that fact about us alone. And the sound of it is just an extension of that of that attitude. Mm-hmm. Um, lyrically, you know, we talk about real stuff, real everyday things that everybody goes through. We go we go through relationship issues. We're talking about everyday struggles. We talk about hating our jobs, but we do what we have to do. Uh, and and it's this is like stuff that people can thoroughly relate to, one hundred fifty percent if you just listen. And that's what we're trying to get people to do: is to listen and admit how you feel about some things in life. And we give you a platform to do that. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that answer. It's a really good answer for that. Um, so you guys call your fans the mechanics that keep the dirty machine running alive and well. For those listeners that are just learning about your band tonight, tell us what that means to you. <laughs> it means particularly, I feel like, uh, you know, everybody who's going for something in life, they need a good support system. People that believe in them, that 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 love them, that that has their backs. And, and I feel like when we say our kind of mechanics, they're the ones that really keep us level headed. They keep us committed. They keep us they keep us honest. And we do what we do for them. You know what I mean? It's for us, but it's really for them. And I think anybody who 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 cares about having a family system or, or, or really good friends, you would do anything for them, you know? And our music is us, you know, sharing how we feel for the people that support us. Yeah, I like that. I like that. You guys call them mechanics, and I feel like it, it almost feels like 
you guys are getting inspired by your fans, you know, um, versus you guys inspiring your fans. It's the other way around. You know well, I mean? and one thing that I actually really love about that that I think is really ingenious and in, in the, the concept of it is the band name being Dirty Machine. <laughs> uh, it it, it right. makes the need, you know, I mean, machines don't work without mechanics to keep them running. So right. it, it brings exactly. the thought process of the necessity of the fans more so than like the believers or, you know, <laughs> I mean, not to bring them up, but you, you know what I mean. People that have names for like, or maggots for Slipknot or, or you know, so I, I think it's more of an endearing term mm -hmm. that, that brings about a family feel to the, to it. I, I really like that. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Heck yeah. Much yeah. pops. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We embrace we embrace anyone and everyone, man. We got we got people even within the band. We show different walks of life, and different backgrounds. We represent different parts of the uh, of the nation and the world. So, you know, why why be exclusive? You know, this this style is meant for everybody. Yeah, you know? totally. Yeah, I want to shake your hand for that when we see each other on July twenty second. That's cool. <laughs> I'll become Thank one you. of those mechanics. It's awesome. I'm so excited to become a mechanic. All right. So you guys <laughs> you guys now have six members in the band. So tell us about the creative writing process of the band. Who takes what responsibility in the band? And I know this is kind of like a double question, but how challenging is it to come up with new material that keeps your band relevant and fresh in today's industry? Oh, man. You know, I think the best part, about us is that we have six guys, we have six minds, but we all are equally driven to do what we do. So and we're all, we all have like similar inspirations, but also different expansive uh, levels of inspiration. So it's really not that hard to come up with a new idea because that's someone coming from their perspective of rock or like that's someone who's coming from another perspective. And I've got all these beats in my mind that I've always wanted to use and you know, they, they, it's more like, a, it's more like, a, less like Lego, it's more like a puzzle. Like, they, they just fit. Whatever, you know, Darren comes up with a riff, I say, like, dude, I feel that. I feel that. Let me, let me play the beat to it. And when Arnold comes up with something, they say, dude, that, that's quite, that's what I was always thinking of. Like, let's do that. It's really not that hard. Uh, I mm -hmm. think what really keeps us going is that everybody has fair input. We listen to everybody. You know, if somebody has an idea, we hear, we hear you are. And we're not like one guy does all the writing. One dude does all the lyrics. One dude does that. We all put in, you know? Yeah, totally. Totally. No, and it sounds like you guys mesh really well because of that. I, I think uh, when you have that type of a coercion between each other, writing and music, it makes it a lot easier to uh, feel a, a completeness to the songs. Right. right. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, I mean... We all, we're all like, we're all hustlers, man. We're all people who <laughs> sacrifice to do what we do. And I think whatever riff or whatever beat or whatever lyric, we're all coming from the same place. So we're already feeling each other before an idea comes up, and we're just waiting for someone to open up. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. All right. So, Nightmare, not too long ago on May 4th, you guys released the music video for Discord, directed by Ron Underwood, which is also the title. Yeah. Right, right, which is also the title track off of the long-awaited album set to release uh, later this month on the 26th. You guys featured two newest members of the band in that video, which is the bassist Youngblood and guitarist Arnold. Would you say that video represents a good feel of what watching Dirty Machine would be live? Oh, man, if I, if I, could, if I could take you all and put you in that 12-hour day that we had, I, you would not want it to end. It, 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 it's like... <laughs> I'm telling you right now, it's like taking, you know, the, the, the live show experience and putting it in a box and letting us bounce off the wall. We're like a padded room. We're all just, yes, to answer your question, yes, that is a very strong example Heck of what yes. we have to go for. We're, yeah, I felt a very intimate moment. Mm -hmm. Very intimate. Like, and it's funny because we, we did that video very much how we rehearsed. We're all like, like facing each other. We're like, oh, I like what you do. Oh, hold his head back. And so what? I break my stick and it goes flying. And Arnold gets up on that. Like, it's it just cool. Because that's where it all starts. It all starts. I mean, you know, six of us get in a room and just letting it all out. And just whatever it is, you do it 100%. And that just pushes the next guy. So at our live shows, I guarantee that then if anyone within here kind of what we're doing, they're going to be bobbing their head. They're going to be moving their hips. They, their heart rate's going to increase. 
it's just guaranteed. And when you see it, oh, man, you're going to want to move to it. We have the craziest march that I've seen in front of my own band. It's, it's ridiculous. Wow, so, that's awesome. So we have uh, some Tucson listeners right now, and definitely schedule yourself on your um, the calendar for July 22nd because this is going to be outstanding off the hook. So you guys have... Wow, thank you. Yes. So you guys have some pretty interesting and exciting shows coming up other than performing at our IPO Radio Festival, right? You guys are also heading over to yes. Whiskey A Go Go to perform a direct support for Corey's Heavenly Tour on August 11th. So it looks like you guys have some dates scattered around there, but... Are there any headlining tours in support of Disc Road in the works for the near future? Yeah, that's the crazy thing about this double taking with the label is, uh, you know, you got to get, you got to take that leap into touring, and that is exactly what we're on right now. We have some potential, uh, some potential opportunities that I cannot disclose right now, but we're working on it. It is. I tell anyone that, that is looking to get on a level, looking to do this really professionally, no matter what, no matter what happens, the hustle never stops, man. You gotta keep, you gotta keep to something. You gotta keep your head in the crowd. You gotta keep members working and looking and pulling and pushing. And, uh, when, when it comes to touring, there's a lot that goes into that. And, uh, we have to make sure that we're good fit and that the, that the venues that we go to are gonna be so we can still love that we get a lot of people that want to go to these shows. So we'll announce. We're going to announce when we find a tour. For now, we're still working on it. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Nice. Well, and it sounds it sounds like you guys are, are gearing up for it to be right when you do it versus just taking anything that comes along. Yeah. So that's that's good to hear. Well, yeah. You know, nothing ever perfect, but, you know, yeah, you definitely want to try to do it as right as you can. Totally. Right, and you guys are actually playing it really smart because um, – if you're playing direct support for Corey, and this is Corey Feldman, everybody, okay? Um, yeah, this guy's yeah. an actor, and I actually didn't even know he sang until I researched you guys. <laughs> I was, like, pretty blown away by that. I was like, wait a minute, what? He sings? <laughs> so I was like, um, so that's yeah, a big name. Yeah. And, um, you know, you guys will get a lot of exposure for that and then gain more fans at the same time, so... Yeah. We got, it's it's amazing the uh the the kinds of personalities that are coming out of the woodwork that are willing to support us and back us up, you know, like uh we've uh, we've communicated with Bill Durst, uh we mix it, you know, minimally, but like just the fact that we got we're working ears left and right, it, it it shows that that people are are really excited for an version of new metal and also just something it's good that, like, you know, we get back to showing what the wide range of metal and rock really can be. So it's yeah. really great. Totally, totally. Um, so I have to ask kind of um, while we're on that topic, is 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 his music somewhat similar to your guys' music? Not even close. I mean, uh, how is that going to work with you guys? That's going to be an interesting <laughs> yeah, show. Yeah, that, that's going to be really interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're talking like two like, universes of music. Like, right? uh, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 but it's not but it's not like a negative thing because sometimes you get two bands on a bill that really have no sense being together but but when you have like and this is not so much a style kind of thing it's more of like a blind street kind of thing Corey is doing his thing up on stage ripping it we're going to be doing our stage ripping it everybody's just going to be having a good that time and that's really that's really what it's all about and if you see Corey perform, you know Homeboy is like in his zone. And that's that's what it's all about. Just getting up there and it's just going all out and everybody has a nice related. That's what this is. Yeah. So no, it, it should be fun, man. I, I know I, I watched him perform live uh, on TV, and I know there was a, a whole bunch of hoopla that, that went down about it. Wait, so you knew um, he was a singer and you didn't yeah. tell me about it? What I, the heck is I this? just had to make Thanks, sure Parker. that this is who you were talking about. <laughs> but um, I, I remember watching it and thinking to myself, I, I don't see why everybody was freaking out about it. I, I thought they were expecting something totally different. I think that he did a great job. His music was really good. Um, I just think yeah. people were kind of expecting a different vibe. So I, I'm currently trying not to laugh because I've seen you guys in your music videos, and I've, I've seen what he's playing. And, I mean, dude, <laughs> we're talking two totally different universes apart here. And, and yeah. you know, that could be 
Yeah, I mean, it could be an awesome thing. Yeah, I think it'll right. be interesting, but you could also scare the crap out of him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, <laughs> it's really funny. We, uh, we we played a show with Trap uh, recently yeah, yeah. at yeah. the Whiskey Agreement. Uh, that was the first time that they had that those guys had seen uh, had seen us. And when we come out with the mask, they, that that right there, the singer, you know, he was like, "Whoa, that was, that was, that's different." He saw me up there, like by the gate and that kind of caught him off guard. He was like, "What the hell was this?" But <laughs> yeah, and when it comes to like when it comes to speculation and like the haters and all that. Man, they are waiting at every corner. Dude. Oh, yeah. They're just waiting. It don't even matter how great or poor or, you know, bombastic you are. They're just waiting to rip you apart. And oh, I yeah. think the people that, that really just go all out, keep the 100 no matter what, that, those are the people that you want to have in the Those are the people you want to have on stage. Heck and yeah. that's totally. what there's going to be <clears throat> on the eleven. Yeah, no, I, as, a, as a fellow musician, I've toured all over this country and I've dealt with my fair share of haters. So I think I have, I have a, a special place when I saw what was going on with Corey and, and him putting his music out there. I, I knew instantly. I was like, wow, this poor guy is pouring his heart out. And, you know, I, I, people just didn't know how to react to it. But I think that uh, the more he goes out there and puts it out there, it's going it, to, it'll, it'll catch on because it really was good music. He did a good job. Right. Okay. So. Yeah. Nightmare, the theme of the show tonight is about bands overexposing themselves. Do you think that playing too many gigs on a local level hurts a band when they're first starting out, and why or why not? Uh, all right. So, I mean, this is uh, it's something that they're, they're, I don't even think there's a right or wrong answer to. I think that there's multiple reasons why you need to play shows. Like, number one, you got to get in front of people. Number two, you got to keep the chops tight. I don't think there's ever reason to really not play a show until you get to that upper level on where it's more business orientated. But when you before that whole thing, before you get more into the business side of things, and you're more just like, okay, let's just get our feet wet and just be a band, play as many gigs as you can. Play that scene on so they're tired of you. And then you move on to another one. Uh, but with technology being the way it is right now, people being able to share your music, well, it's easy to, quote-unquote, oversaturate, you know what I'm saying, uh, a scene. But as long as you spread yourself in and you're always creating different little areas surrounding your area, and then you come back to it now, that one cool. But uh, at the same time, if you just want to go play seven bands, pack up and go play that show. Just go play. Like, you, if the venue's going to book you, then you have the right to play that show. That's really what it is. And... And the, and the business side of it, like I said, that comes along. So I don't really think there's a better, like, such thing as playing your seeds too much. As long as you stand, do bands, meet new students, then you're doing, you're doing fine. You're doing good. That's what we did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I I totally agree. I think when you're first starting off, it, it never hurts to go out there and perform as much as you can because you're you're trying at that point to get new people to see your band and new stuff. But there is, in my opinion, a certain point in time when you've been around for a year, maybe two years, and you've noticed that the last three shows I've played, it's always been the same people. At that point, if you keep sure. going at it, at some point in time, people are going to start the whole, oh, well, I'm not going to go this week. I can go next week and catch them there, too. Um, so that's, that's about the time, like you said, when you really need to start expanding outside of your, your current region and really starting to try and spend that weekend time or at least one or two weeks a month going to, you know, a city that's an hour or two away from you to try and and gain there. And then also the other, other thing would be, I think the biggest issue that people make a mistake about is that they play the same venue in their area too often. So if you play one venue, don't play that same venue every other week or every week. Play different venues around that city because you're going to be getting people that normally don't go to the venue that you're constantly playing going to other venues, and that's how you you know get in front of more people. So I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, I like that. That, that last point is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, and, and as you and to to validate that point, as you're playing more often, if you are attentive to your, to your fan base, you're going to start feeling that you, okay, I've done this way too many times, or they've seen us plenty enough, let's try to vent you out, you know. Yeah. Your fans are still not they're going to tell you everything, like you said. Like, you may, you might find your numbers dwindle, you may find your fans moving a little, okay, let's take a break from this scene, let's go try somewhere else. You totally. know, you're going to be really mindful of your fans, be very mindful 
of your uh, of where of your area and how it functions. Yep, totally agree. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. So, um, so nightmare. What do you do outside of music to rejuvenate your creativity? <laughs> uh, you know, you know. The funny thing is, I'm actually on my way to go play a hockey game right now. I know yeah. from. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm from Michigan, so I grew up playing hockey since I was nine years old, and that's been one thing that always helps me uh, helps me vent out my uh, my my frustrations and my energy. But uh, when it comes to creation, uh, man, I do I do tons of different things, man. I I, I'm, I bowl, I'm a bowler, so I go. Dude, you'll meet tons of personalities in every building you walk in, every oh, yeah. activity you partake. You meet tons of people that got so many different wild stories that you might not have experienced, but it touches you. So I guess to sum, to sum it up, meeting around other people, that's what I do. I am always with different groups of people in different areas where you just continue to meet people that got something to say. And be open-minded. Be, able, be a good listener. You don't always have to be a good speaker. Be a good listener. And you'll find that you have you can be inspired by someone talking about having this excellent day. They woke up and the sun felt good on their face and then their kid hugged them and said, I love you. They walked out. Well there's a good song idea right there. You yeah, know? That's awesome. And uh, yeah, live live a little bit outside your body, you know? And uh that's what I try to focus on. I always try to be in uh, as in as many other people's areas as I can be. You know, we've uh, we've been asking that question now for a little while, and I, I have to say that is honestly one of my favorite responses so far. Yeah, it's very positive. I, I totally concur with that and agree with it. I, I mean, I, I personally, I love to learn new things, so that's why, you know, Isabel yeah. and I, we have our certain small group of friends, but we go out there and we meet new people all the time, and I, I can totally see how you're you're using that as a way to rejuvenate your creativity. I love all right, that. Awesome. We're going to have a song by Dirty Machine yeah. about In the Mind of Music with Nate and Issa because uh, we've <laughs> just inspired this band. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Awesome. We expect it by July 22nd. Yes. We, we need to hear this song. We need to have like an exclusive like sit down. <laughs> You do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally. We're, we're right there with you. We'll go grab our glasses here, wine or cook. No, okay. So, um, Nightmare. Oh, my gosh. It's been a pleasure. So, anything else you'd like to add about Dirty Machine while we have you? Absolutely. Look, like, remember, man, it's all about keeping it 100 in everything that you do. And that's that's what we do. We're, we're there to support anybody that... That has something they want, has something they feel, has something that they want to be. Look, we got your back 100. And you just listen to us, I guarantee you're going to get booked up. We're all about that energy. We're all about real life. So you want to be 100? Listen to Daddy Machine. We got you, man. Check us out. Check us out on everything Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that. TommySackRecords.com, man. We're there. Sweet. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, most importantly, pre orders are available for the album right now on zombieshark.net, okay? Nice. Zombieshark.net, pre order the album, okay? Okay. Definitely. Right. We will make so, sure to push that on Facebook. Yeah, we'll push that up on our Excellent. social media platforms. So, awesome. Thanks for coming on the show tonight and talking to us about Dirty Machine Nightmare. And listeners out there, make well, sure you catch them out on the road and subscribe to all their media platforms, just like how we said. Listeners in Arizona, make uh-huh. sure you catch them again at our very own IPO Radio Musical Festival scheduled for July 22nd. And now, like you just heard, make sure that you also go because on zombieshark.net, they have their pre orders for their album coming out. That's right. Um, okay, so Nightmare, just go ahead and hold on for us on the line. We're going to get the song um, Discord out there for our listeners to listen to right now. We're going to get you to do a little bit of a plug-in for us. Okay, so just hold on for us, and um, we will uh, be right back. All right, cool. Cool. 